Jack Palance was a great American actor, star, and icon. To say he was a man of mystery would be an understatement. He came from an unlikely background and managed to become one of the biggest stars of his time. Join Facts First to learn about Jack Palance's life and career, the struggles throughout his journey, and how some still believe this lie about him after death. Volodymyr Palahniuk was born February 18, 1919, in Latimer Mines, Pennsylvania. His parents were Ukrainian immigrants, and the family had a hard life during his childhood. As a result, he had to work many odd jobs to make a living. He spent much of his youth and early life working in a coal mine. Owing to his natural strength, he decided to pursue an athletic career. Under the professional name Jack Brazzo, he became rather successful as a boxer and was able to sustain himself. One of the highlights of his early career was that he punched Marlon Brando while fighting him and ended up putting him in the hospital. But it wasn't in the boxing ring. It was on the set of a production that the two worked on. Little did he know Marlon Brando would one day become a huge star, and so would he. While he enjoyed his boxing career, he never looked back at it during later stages in his life and felt it wasn't the wisest decision. Nevertheless, Jack's life was full of adventure and risks. As the Second World War broke out, he enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. It was rumored he was injured during the war and that his face became disfigured. The rumor has it that he had to get surgery later to fix his appearance so he could be prepared for an eventual acting career. After finishing his service in the military, he attended Stanford University and pursued a career in theater, though he dropped out one semester before getting his degree. During his university years, he worked a variety of odd jobs, such as being a soda jerk, a lifeguard, a cook, and even a model. He began his acting career in theater and landed his first major role in an adaptation of A Streetcar Named Desire. He was chosen to play Stanley Kowalski in the play after Marlon Brando dropped out. Although Brando still landed the role in the film adaptation of the play, and Jack had to find other opportunities to break into the film industry. This video is sponsored by Kamakoto Knives, which are made from high-quality Japanese steel using traditional centuries-old techniques. The first thing I noticed about these knives is the beautiful, heavy-duty ash wood box they come in. Not only is this great for storage, but it makes a great gift for any chef or knife enthusiast. Upon opening the box, I couldn't help but admire the craftsmanship that goes into each knife. Each one is handcrafted by an expert bladesmith, a 19-step process that takes several years to complete for a single Japanese steel knife. Then, each blade is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. I had never used a Japanese steel knife until Kamakoto, but even as a casual home chef, I immediately noticed the quality was way better than any knife I'd used before. It's reasons like these that Kamakoto knives are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. Kamakoto has several special offers going on right now and is offering our viewers an extra $50 off any purchase with the discount code FAXVERSE on top of ongoing special offers. Go to kamakoto.com slash FAXVERSE to get your knives set and help support our channel. Jack Palance's Career Jack Palance's film debut was in the 1950 film Panic in the Streets. It was directed by Elia Kazan, and in the film he had a supporting role and was credited as Walter Jack Palance. Presumably, Walter is a nickname he got due to the larger society not being able to pronounce Vladimir. As for his new surname, it was once thought that Palahniuk should be pronounced as Polanski. Eventually, this became Palance, and he would soon be known as Jack Palance. The following year, he landed a role in the now-hit film Halls of Montezuma. He occasionally returned to theater as well, but with the release of Halls of Montezuma, it seemed his film career was now set in stone. His first major lead role that made him a star was the 1952 film Sudden Fear. He starred alongside Joan Crawford in this noir mystery film. He played a dark character who tried to romance a woman, perhaps with ulterior motives. This was a risky role to take in the rather conservative 1950s and especially a challenging role for someone trying to establish himself as a leading man. But the risk was worthwhile and it further catapulted Jack to stardom. His other great films in the 50s include Man in the Attic, Sign of the Pagan, The Silver Chalice, Flight to Tangier, and Arrowhead. He had a small but memorable role in the Western film Shane, considered to be one of the best in the genre and one of his best films. In the 1960s, he made a few great films in Europe, including Night Train to Milan and Contempt, the latter of which he was personally selected for by Jean-Luc Godard. In the 60s, he also had his first major TV role in the series The Greatest Show on Earth. 
His other great films throughout this decade were Once a Thief, The Professionals, Torture Garden, and Kill a Dragon. His film career continued in the 70s, though sadly many of his films made in America were flops. Nevertheless, he didn't lose hope. He moved to Italy and began a successful career there. He appeared in films like Africa Express, L'Enfermiera, God's Son, Black Cobra Woman, and Welcome to Blood City. His career in the U.S. became big again when he appeared in Ripley's Believe It or Not, as well as the hit film Baghdad Cafe. Perhaps the biggest successful role towards the end of his career was in the film City Slickers. For it, he won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. The Legend of Jack Palance Many younger audiences knew Jack from his role in City Slickers. Palance tried to get his co-star Billy Crystal to shut up when they first met. The character he played, Curly, was written specifically for him, and Billy Crystal, who was a big fan, was nervous to meet his hero. He mentioned that the role was written for Palance. Jack Palance, noticing how nervous Billy Crystal was, told him it was fine and he'd be pleased to take on the role. His career continued after City Slickers, though he worked less as he got older. His final credit was in the 2004 TV movie Back When We Were Grown Ups. According to IMDb, Jack accumulated 126 credits, mostly in film, with a few notable TV roles. He was arguably one of the most versatile actors of his time, and somehow managed to balance being a leading man, a supporting character actor, as well as a villain all at once. An extremely rare feat for any actor. He clearly loved acting, but didn't care much for his own work, and barely ever saw any of his films. In fact, he once stated he'd watch as few as seven or eight films per year. Even after his passing, many believed that due to his stardom, he must have had a high opinion of his work. But he was rather critical of his own work, and even once remarked most of his work was garbage. Nevertheless, we're glad he gave us so many memorable performances. Jack had a reputation for playing tough guy roles, and perhaps his actual hardships helped him prepare for such roles. But he also had a reputation for being a bit difficult to work with and for sometimes having a short temper on set. Many actors claimed they were intimidated by him, and perhaps this also helped craft his on-screen presence. He eventually changed his name to Walter Jack Palance, finally removing any differentiation between who he was and who he was as an actor. It's also rumored that his appearance and commanding presence was the inspiration of the Superman villain Darkseid, though this hasn't been confirmed and many still believe this about him after his death. We also know Phil Wire from the Lucky Luke comic book series was inspired by Jack's character in the film Shane. He was also the original consideration to play Jack Torrance in The Shining, according to Stephen King, who wrote the novel from which the movie was adapted. He was also originally considered to play the villain Francisco Scaramanga in The Man with the Golden Gun, which was eventually given to Sir Christopher Lee. As you can see, he was an actor in high demand. And though his career had its ups and downs, he never stopped working and never stopped persisting. He had three children with his first wife, Virginia. His son, Cody, sadly passed away in 1998, and he survived by his two daughters and second wife, Elaine Rogers. He died from pancreatic cancer on November 10th, 2006 in California. He was 87. Now it's time to hear from you. Had you heard the rumor about Jack being the inspiration of the Superman villain Darkseid, a rumor that started after his death? Let us know in the comments section below.